Jesús. Bendito eres, Padre. God bless the church. Amen. Amen. God bless my pastors. Happy Pastor's Day. I love you guys. All right, so we're going to sing Alaba a Dios. I know everybody knows this song, so you guys can sing along with me. Check. All right. Two. Dios no rechaza oración, oración es alimento. Nunca vi un justo sin respuesta, lo que daré el sufrimiento. Basta solamente. Espera lo que Dios irá a hacer. Cuando Él levanta sus manos, es hora de vencer. Oh, alaba, simplemente alaba. Si estás llorando, alaba, en la prueba, alaba, si estás sufriendo, alaba, no importa, alaba, tu alabanza la escucha. Dios al frente abriendo camino, quedando cadenas, sacando espina. Manda a tus ángeles contigo a luchar. Él abre puertas, nadie puede cerrar. Él trabaja para los que confían. Camina contigo de noche, de día. Levanta tus manos, tu victoria llegó. Comienza a cantar, alaba a Dios. Alaba a Dios, 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 alaba a Dios. Alaba a Dios, alaba a Dios. La gente necesita entender lo que Dios está hablando. Cuando Él queda en silencio, es porque está trabajando. Basta solamente esperar lo que Dios irá a hacer. Cuando Él siente sus manos, es hora de vencer. 
o oh, alaba simplemente alaba si estás está llorando alaba en la prueba alaba si estás está sufriendo alaba no importa alaba tu alabanza le escuchará Dios al frente abriendo caminos, quedando cadenas, sacando espinas. Manda a tus ángeles contigo a luchar. Él abre puertas, nadie puede cerrar. Él trabaja para los que confían. Camina contigo de noche y de día. Levanta tus manos, tu victoria llegó. Comienza a cantar y alaba a Dios. Alaba a Dios, 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 alaba a Dios. Alaba a Dios, 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 alaba a Dios. Dios, alaba a Dios, alaba a Dios. Dios al frente abriendo camino, quebrando cadenas, sacando espinas. Manda a sus ángeles contigo a luchar. Él abre puertas, nadie puede cerrar. Él trabaja para los que confían, camina contigo de noche y de día, levanta tus manos, su victoria llegó, comienza a cantar y alaba a Dios, alaba a Dios, alaba a Dios, alaba a Dios, y alaba a Dios. Alaba a Dios, 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 cántale a Señor. Alaba a Dios. Yes, for Jesus we worship you, Father God. Aleluya, Santo tú eres, Señor. Aleluya. 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 Te alabamos, Señor. Bendito eres, Padre. Aleluya. Te bendecimos, Señor. Te adoramos y glorificamos tu nombre. Te exaltamos. Aleluya. Aleluya. Te bendecimos, Padre. Y ahora, ¿cuántos han venido con una expectativa? ¿Cuántos han venido con la expectativa en esta tarde? How many have come with an expectation tonight? ¿O cuántos solamente vinieron a visitar? Or how many just came there as a visitor? Hay una diferencia entre ambas. There is a difference in between. Cuando usted viene a visitar, when you come to visit, no se lleva nada. You don't take anything away. Pero cuando viene con una expectativa, But when you come with an expectation, preparado con un corazón, prepared from a heart, el Señor no falla en y no tarda en darle su bendición. The Lord doesn't tarry in what He wants to do. Te alabamos, Señor Jesús. So praise God's name. Y hoy hemos venido a honrar a los pastores de esta casa to the pastors of this house, como ellos se merecen those who deserve, Pastor Samuel y Miriam Figueroa en esta tarde, Samuel and Miriam Figueroa por Hallelujah. el constante trabajo que ellos hacen the constant work that they do. queremos que ellos sepan We want them to take, que ellos han afectado mi vida they've impacted my life, personalmente personally, muy grandemente in a great way. 
Yo me recuerdo cuando yo llegué aquí. I remember when I first arrived. No es la misma persona que está en esta tarde I, junto a ustedes. I'm not the same person I am today. Y es solamente por el esfuerzo, las oraciones. And it's by the strength and the prayers. Que ellos se han depositado in, en mí. Which they deposited in me. Que han ido al trono de la gracia e intercediendo por mí. Interceding in the throne of God. Y yo le estoy agradecido en esta tarde and a ambos I am greatly grateful to them y a su familia pastoral and to the pastoral family porque cuantos saben que todos sus hijos están en ministerio because how do you know that all of the children are in ministry de una manera u otra ellos están envueltos one way or a shape or another they are involved y le damos la gloria a Dios por lo que está haciendo en su familia and we praise God for what God is doing in the family y a través de su familia through the family y queremos honrarlo como ellos merecen en esta tarde and they deserve to be honored the way they should be o sea que si usted está de visita So if you're a visitor today, y no ha tenido la oportunidad todavía, and you haven't had an opportunity yet, todavía está tiempo. There is still time. Usted puede bendecirlos a ellos. To bless them. Puede dejarle sentir el amor que ustedes tienen hacia in ellos. In which way God ever moves you. Que no sea un amor escondido, sino que pueda ser demostrado. That it's not a hidden faith, but one demonstrated. Te alabamos, Señor Jesús. Y ahora vamos a presentar. Now we're going to present toca la mejor parte de este servicio la, part of this service, el mensaje de la palabra de Dios message of the word of God, lo que tiene Dios para con usted y conmigo to see what God has for you and I. este hombre de Dios this man of God, yo lo puedo llamar pastor lo puedo llamar amigo I can call him a pastor and a friend porque yo he estado en muchas ocasiones con él in many situations with him a través de su liderazgo for, sobre 34 años by the leadership of over 34 years yo recuerdo cuando yo estaba en su iglesia en Georgia I remember in Georgia as I was in his church y oía las historias de cómo empezó aquella iglesia I heard the stories of how the church even started alrededor de 25 personas nada más with just 25 people no le daban ninguna esperanza de que ese ministerio floreciera not one hope for that ministry to flourish pero él tenía la fe but he had the faith él tenía el llamado he had the calling y él estaba sometido en obediencia a lo que Dios había dicho sobre su vida everything the obedience of what God had said y hoy por hoy and today for today podemos ver el fruto de su trabajo we can see the fruit of la his fidelidad work, de Dios en su vida the faithfulness of God a través de lo que Él hace and by what He's doing en su ministerio in His ministry hoy tiene una iglesia en, en One Rose, Georgia in One Rose, Georgia He has a church con 66 acres de terreno with 66 acres una iglesia of multicultural a multicultural church donde, donde se adora In which when they pray, en espíritu y en verdad, in spirit and in truth, ya sean negros, o are, americanos, black, afroamericanos, African American, ya sean hispanos, Hispanic, ya sean blancos, or white, ya sean chinos, or Chinese, cualquier nacionalidad, whatever nationality, pueden ir libremente a, a, a Hope Church, freely in Hope Church, y a echar sus manos y adorar al mismo Dios, can lift up their hands and praise the same God, en esta tarde entre nosotros. that is here with us today. Come on, church, let's give them a round of applause. Hallelujah. Y no es una coincidencia de que él esté aquí. And it is not a coincidence that Esto es una cita here. divina y This sabemos is a eso. Divine appointment. La trayectoria de él es bien similar a la trayectoria de nuestro obispo. The trajectory is very similar to our bishop. Y dice la palabra de Dios the word of God says, que cuando María fue a donde Elizabeth, when Mary went to Elizabeth, lo que estaba en el vientre de Elizabeth, what was in the womb of Elizabeth, brincó. Jumped. ¿Por qué? Why? Estaba frente a la presencia. Because it was close to el the presence. El espíritu es uno. The spirit is one. Y lo que ha hecho en la vida del obispo Pool, and what he's done in the life of Bishop Pool, está Poole, preparando para hacerlo en la vida de cada uno de nosotros. He's preparing to do it in each and every nosotros single one of our lives. De gloria en gloria. Glory to glory. El Señor tiene una promesa sobre esta casa. God has a promise over this church. Nos toca a usted y a mí. And it's up to you and I. Para no en la brecha del camino. Stand in that path. Y creer lo que él ha dicho. And believe what he has said. Casa over this house y sin más preámbulo, and without any further ado yo quiero invitar al obispo Pula que pase por aquí lo recibimos con Poole. un fuerte abrazo obispo Bishop Pula Bishop Pula with us hallelujah you can do better than that I said put your hands together for Jesus in this house come on I'm you glad you know Jesus today I'm you glad he's brought you out Of issues, situations, darkness, you couldn't have brought yourself out of. I'm so excited to be here today at Ecclesia Pentecostal Genesis Church. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for a minute. You may be seated. I was trying to practice up my Spanish, but uh, 
probably ain't going to go too far. But I'm so honored to be here today and honored to be with your pastor and his wife. Uh, I just love leadership and I love pastors. And this is his day and her day. And I just thank God for them. I met uh, your bishop last night and we had a great time. And uh, Pastor Miriam I just met this morning. So thank God for this family. I understand, I just want to talk for a second. I understand what it, what it takes uh, for a family to be in ministry. Uh, when you're pastoring a church and you're raising children, it's a miracle that when you're pastor's children that you just ain't gone off the deep end. It's a miracle that pastor's children are in ministry after seeing ministry behind the scenes. And I thank God to see that. that and let me just say this also. It's also being a pastor in a church and staying married for 30-something years, I guess, been married that long and being in ministry it's just an honor to be able to be a, a part and associated with what they're doing in this city and I'm just saying all that because the sacrifice the commitment the effort the tenacity the fight the determination never quit when you feel like quitting come on somebody but they have not quit and because they have not quit you're in this place right now and we're here. I know we've done it one time, but let's do it again. Stand to your feet. And let's give these pastors an honor and a hand and thank God for y'all. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. We honor you. That's right. Amen. I know, I know some people say, well, they're just, they're just a man and a woman. But the Bible says this. You can, you can have a seat for a second because I will just go on and on. But <laughs> the Bible says that uh, it's important to give honor to honor is due. It's what the Bible says. The Bible says that a man that labors in the word is worthy of double honor. Double honor. That's what the Bible says. So when you are honoring this man and woman today, but we ought to do it every day. Come on, somebody. We ought to pray for them, lift them up, encourage them, uh, be there for them. But when you start doing that, God starts honoring the church, honoring the people. When you honor the man of God, the woman of God, I'm just trying to help you, that you start seeing things happen when you hold them up in prayer and support what they're doing because there is vision that God places in a man and a woman, vision not just for now, vision for the future. And that's what he's placed in them. And so I'm so excited to be here, man. I, I just wanted Carlos to preach. I just wanted Carlos to preach. And, and I know a lot, no, none of you know me, but... Carlos and Joanna, we go back a long, long way, and I have seen this man and woman just grow so much, and then especially since he's been in Orlando, I didn't know he had that preach in him like that. So I didn't know he had, your bishop has brought that out of you, man. I was, just in, I was just enjoying myself. I thought you just might well preach. So it's good to be with you today. I'm not going to hold you real long, but I, I want to say something. I really appreciate a relationship and friendship. I don't know Carlos introduced them a while ago, and I'm not trying to embarrass them, but it's so good to have Benny Lever and his wife with us. I love Benny, and I just met his wife, and uh, I just, I've known Benny for a long, long time. And it's, it's good that you have people in your life that will always be in your life. How many of you know what I'm saying? So it's good to have them today. Uh, Benny is a traitor. He left Georgia and moved to Florida. But, you know, all I can say is, I'm, I'm real sport. How many, how many like sports? I just like sports. I grew up on sports and just love sports. But, but I, I, you know, he left Georgia, but I can say that Georgia Bulldogs are still number one in the nation, especially after yesterday when they spanked Florida. That's all I want to say. All right, if you got your Bible, turn to Exodus chapter 17. I believe I have a word for this house and for your pastor. Exodus 17. Uh, start at verse number 8. We're going to read down through verse number 16. Exodus, the second book in the Bible. It shouldn't take you that long. This is a Bible college church. So Exodus, the second book of the Bible. Verse number 8. Are you there? Yeah. I, I wouldn't have been wanting to say this since I got up here. Abba, Senor. Alaba, Senor. Abba, Senor. <laughs> I'll translate it for you. Praise the Lord. Verse number 8. Now Amalek 
came and fought with Israel and Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him, fought with Amalek. Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. When he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy. Everybody say heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him. He sat on it, and Aaron and Hur supported his hands. One on one side, and the other on the other side. Watch. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Hmm. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Watch what Moses does. Moses built an altar. He called its name Yahweh Nisi. The Lord is my banner. And he said, because the Lord has sworn. You know, God, when he says something, you got, you got a whole book right here. When God says something, how I many you know you can count on it? Well, you say, well, I ain't seen it yet. God ain't through yet. The Lord swore. The Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Everybody say generation to generation. Lord, speak to our hearts and change our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to preach for a few minutes on a message I've entitled, Raise the Man's Hand. Raise the man's hand. God calls, he appoints, and he anoints people to lead people out of places where they're stuck at. God calls and anoints people to be able to move people from where they are. Because it was never God's intention when we came to this earth to always stay in the same place. I don't mean geographically. Stay in the same place mentally, spiritually, financially, physically. We are meant by God to grow. God never put nothing on the earth not to grow. God put everything on the earth to grow. And when God places a vision in a man, and the vision is in a place, not a building, you can have church anywhere. You don't need a building and call it a church. We are the church. How many know we are the church? The church is us. It's not a building. So understanding that, God says, I meant for what I planted in the earth to grow. Now, your pastors are a gift. How many know they're a gift? Yeah. I was going to bring a red bow and put it on their heads, but I didn't. They're a gift. How do you know that? The Bible says that in Ephesians 4.11 that God gave gifts to men. Everybody's got a gift inside of us. Gave gifts to men. What are those gifts? They're five-fold gifts. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Those are five-fold gifts that God's given the church to do what? To be united, to be stronger, to grow. That every part, every joint, every ligament supplies that the church is edified and grows itself with love. That's the gift of the man of God. And watch this. This little journey we're about to take is comparable to Moses and what God placed in Moses. God, watch this from the very beginning, protected Moses. Remember, when Moses was born, it was Pharaoh's job to want to kill every male baby. Y'all remember that, right? To kill every male baby. Well, let me give you a little understanding of that. I, I believe that the reason Pharaoh wanted to kill the male child is because the male child carries seed. When the male child carries seed, then think about this just typically and symbolically. The male child has the ability to reproduce with the right connection. 
Ooh, I'm about to go somewhere. And he has the ability to reproduce. Pharaoh did not want Israel to reproduce. And the devil does not want what's inside of you, what's inside of them, to reproduce after their kind. Because he knows it's going to cause growth. God Almighty. So we tried to kill the seed. That's what the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He tries to kill what's inside of you. But I ain't let no devil kill what's inside of me. I ain't let no devil steal what's inside of me. Because I know who put it in me. How many know who put it in you? It was God that put it in you. You can't let the enemy take from you what God placed in you. It's too valuable, man. Too valuable. You got to be willing to fight for it. And so Moses is protected. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1 and 5 that God has kept us by the power for salvation ready to be revealed in the last day. Aren't you glad God has kept you through some crazy stuff? Aren't you glad that God's kept you from some dangerous stuff? Aren't you glad that God kept you and you're alive today? Because there's some of us in this building, including me holding this mic, that we should not be here today. But God protected us and God kept us. Because he knew you got something in you that it ain't over yet. It ain't finished yet. Huh. Put him in a little basket and protected him. Watch. This is something for you, y'all. Let me say y'all. That's that English term. You know, let me translate. That means y'all. Bible says that Moses could not be hidden any longer. My God. The Bible said Moses could not be hidden any longer. He had to come out of the basket. <laughs> well, I came to tell this pastor and his wife and this church that what God is doing here, I feel it, and what I sense, that what God's doing here, you can't keep it hidden. It can't be in obscurity. I don't care if in an office building or where you're at, that is too great what God's placed in them that they're coming out of hiding. This church is coming out of obscurity that God's got his hand on it. Anybody believe it up in here? Protected. Huh. Moses, you don't, let me just say this. You don't pastor a church because you call yourself to. Who in their right mind would do that? Who in their, yeah, I hear the children going, nobody. You know, I got three kids too. They're grown, believe me. But it's a miracle. They're all in ministry. I'm telling you, God's so good. So comparable to our stories, man. That anyway, I ain't got time for that. So, so I'm telling you, you don't call yourself to be a pastor. God calls you. Moses ran from it. <laughs> Moses ran from the calling. But how many know you can't run too far from God? <laughs> Woo, I'm about to preach up and I said, you can't run too. Some of y'all are sitting here today. You think you run from God. You can't run from God. David said, where can I go from God's spirit? I can go up. I can go down. I can go around. But God's always there. God is always there. Why? He's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. God knows where you are. Knows everything about you. And God called Moses on the backside of a desert. Moses has an encounter. It's important to understand when you're following leadership that they've had an encounter with God. Woo! Call by God, because when you're called by God, God's going to keep you when you don't want to keep yourself. Moses is called by God, has an encounter with God. God says to Moses, God says, come now and I will send you. Woo! The Bible says it this way in Romans 10. How can people believe if they have not heard? Come on now. How can they believe if they have not heard? How can somebody hear unless somebody sent? How beautiful. Let's take your shoes off. I'm just kidding. How beautiful are the feet of those that bring the gospel of good news. I don't know where y'all been late. I don't know where y'all been lately, but we need some good news. We hear all the bad news, all the fear-mongering news, but there's good news. And the man and woman of God been called by God to bring some good news. Happy, beautiful are the feet when this man was sent by God to come up here in Orlando, Florida. Called by God. Anointed by God. 
appointed by God to bring good news. And the good news is people can be saved. I'm going to say that again. The good news is people can be saved. The good news is people in your family can be saved. The good news is people you think that God can never touch. His arm is not shortened nor his hand heavy that God can't reach out and save anybody. But they got to hear. They can't hear without a preacher. Ah, how can they preach unless they're sent? God said, come Moses, I'm going to send you. Huh. Now, God said the reason I'm going to send you is in Exodus 3, 7, because God said, I have seen the oppression. I've heard their cries because of their sorrows. I know. <laughs> wait, a minute, wait a minute, God sees, God hears, and God knows. God sees, God hears, and God knows. I'll say it again. God sees, God hears, and God knows. God said, I'm coming down. Yeah, God. I'm coming down. When I come down, I'm bringing you up. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Don't miss this. God himself didn't come down. God himself. God didn't come down, but God said, I'm coming down. And I'm bringing up. Isn't it amazing how God himself didn't come down, but God came down through Moses? Y'all see that, right? God came down through Moses. Because it was God said, come on, Moses, I'm going to send you. God sends him against the most powerful man in the world. Moses, you know, Moses doubted all that. Moses said, who am I? I can't even speak right. Like me, I thank God, you know, I got that slang, you know, I stutter sometime, I spit sometime, but God uses it somehow, I don't know. But I'm telling you, God said, God said, I'm sending you most, I can't, I can't, God, I stutter. Because who made your mouth? Who made your mouth? I made your mouth. I'll put the words in your mouth. Watch this. So God sends him into Pharaoh, because God said, I've seen, I've heard, I know, I'm coming down, and when I come down, watch this, remember what I said at the beginning, God called somebody not to leave you where you are, stay stuck where you're at, but this is not a church, it's a movement. See, people want monuments, God wants movement. People want denominations, not the wrong denominations, but it sometimes denominations become a monument. God is always about movement. God is not stagnant, God is not dead. It doesn't matter what season we're in. God wants movement. And God said, when I come down through a man, through a vision, through a purpose, through destiny, you ain't going to stay where you're at. I'm bringing you up. Anybody want to be brought up by God out of the place where you are? Because God would never, hear me, God would never bring you out of where you're at and put you in a worse place. So God says to Moses, you come on, I'm coming down, and I'm bringing them people up. I'm bringing them out to a good land, a large land, beautiful land. Yeah, yeah, you've been here what, seven years? Yeah, seven years. So in seven years, God has made, <laughs> I, might, I might run through the church today. If I can, my legs are sore. But anyway... <laughs> That's another story. So, so God has made a way where it looked impossible. Has he ever done that for you? He made a way, we always say it, out of no way. God made a way through a man with what it was in his hand. Oh yeah. I'm going to say that again. Let that kind of marinate inside you. God made a way for a man with what was in his hand. What do you mean? Red Sea. Right? I'm coming down, bringing you up to a good and large land. You think this is it? Come on, Ecclesia. You think this is it? 
You think this is all God can do? Come on, I need some help. You think this is all God can do? Somebody shout no. God can do greater. God can do more than you see right now. But you're saying, I don't see a way. Well, in seven years, God's made a way out of no way. With what's in their hand. God will use what's in your hand. It might look crazy. It might make no sense. But if you'll use what God's given you, God will make a way. God made a way with what is in his hand. Moses held the rod up. You know the story, man. And made a way. Now, now watch. To my text. That was the introduction. To my text now. God calls, anoints, and appoints, right? Yeah. God speaks vision through a man. God comes down through a man to bring them out. To a good land, large land, land flowing with milk and honey. Now, here, here's how the enemy works. Here's how the enemy works. Know your enemy. We'll say that again. Know your enemy. Don't be ignorant. Don't be unlearned about your enemy. The enemy can only do two things, brother. Two things. This is the, I'm going to help you all. This is the only two things the enemy can do in your life. Y'all realize the devil's real. I'm not trying to glorify the devil, but I'm just trying to get you ready for something. That he can only do two things because he's defeated. How many know he's defeated? Got... All right, what? Here's two things, Carlos. Only two things he can do is deceive and accuse. I'm going to say that again. The only two things he can do is deceive you and accuse you. Yeah, he, is, he can deceive you. He did that with Adam and Eve. Deception is his trick. Accusation is a lie. So now the devil accuses you, accuses you. Well, you know God, he can't love you. Look what you've done in your past. You know God can't do anything to that ministry right there. Look at it. It's in a storefront somewhere. You know God, yeah, the resources ain't there. That's the devil devil making accusation and deception how could god ever use you look where you've come from anybody heard that how could god ever the devil lie if god really loved you why are you going through that right there that's a deception and accusation that is a lie because watch this they're on a move somewhere they're moving somewhere now watch every time you are about to make a move get ready for resistance Resistance and battles always confront people that are on the move. Because I read right here, I read right here, you know, you know, we're just people. But people in general are complainers. I know none of y'all have complained. I know none of y'all have even complained today. But we're in general, we're complainers. We complain. All right, don't look at your husband, wife. We complain. And watch this. God does this great bringing out party. Now, I'm going to help you right here. Isn't it amazing? Pharaoh, pastor, bishop, tried to keep them back. Who's trying to keep you back? Just thought about that. Who's trying to keep you back? Pharaoh tries to keep them back, Carlos. Amalek tries to keep them from going in. <laughs> so good. The struggle that you've been through is trying to pull you back. The place you're going is trying to resist you. Amalek. So the Bible says that, that they complain after a great victory. I mean, come on, y'all. You're in the crowd. A couple million people. God causes a man to hold up a rod. A rod, a staff. Are you serious? And Egypt's coming behind them, mountains on both sides of them. It's impassable. Red Sea in front of them. This ain't no little pond. The Red Sea in front of them. And God tells Moses, what's in your hand? Well, I ain't got much. God said you better use it. Oh, that's, right that's, right that's so good, man. Some of y'all say, well, I ain't got much. God said you better use it. Watch me. So he holds it up. God parts the Red Sea. You know the story. They go through. They get to the other side. Come on, somebody. I think it was Miriam. Grabs a tambourine. Miriam starts going crazy. Come on, read the Bible. Yeah, oh, does she? Okay. 
Miriam grabs a tambourine and creates this praise party. Oh my God, people are rejoicing. They're singing songs. The Lord has destroyed the horse and rider in the sea. They're, they're excited. They're, they're rejoicing. They're, they're happy. We've come out. We, we broke the grip of our past and where we've been and we're going somewhere. They're excited. They're excited. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. At least 45 days later, There ain't no food. Now everybody's wanting to go back of what God brought you out of because that's what you're familiar with. You'd rather go back to what you're familiar with than go to where God's taking you. Because watch, where God's taking you, you ain't never been. So it is a little apprehensive and a little scary to go somewhere you've never been. Are you with me? So they, they go out. God brings them through. They rejoice. But now it gets a little hard. Building, hear me, building people's lives and ministry takes work. That's not a cuss word. Work. It takes work. Somebody hit your neighbor and say, it takes you Look at them. It takes you using what you have. And don't let them say, I ain't got much. God can take little and start multiplying it into much. All right, hear me. Hey, hey, can anybody smile in here? Just smile. You're a greeter. I just, I just listed you. You're a greeter. You, can, you ain't got to do anything. Just stand at the door and smile. Do you understand the hell people fight before they come into a building? Do you understand what people go through in life Monday through Saturday and they're trying to find a place on Sunday that's a safe place, is a place where they're loved, is a place where they're not judged, is a place where people look at their appearance, is a place where people look at the color of their skin. They are just loved and welcomed and it starts with you smiling. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, 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 so they, they start complaining. God, God meets their way right before Amalek comes. This is interesting. Set 17, Exodus. Right before Amalek comes in verse 8, they start complaining because there's no water. But again, God is about to make a way. God tells Moses, go to the rock. I ain't got time. Go to the rock. You go to the rock. God says, I'm going ahead of you. Divine providence is God always going ahead of you before you get there. Oh, so good. I'll use y'all as an example. When y'all left Warner Robins, Georgia, y'all knew y'all knew they ain't nothing like Hope Church. I'm just I'm just speaking. <laughs> so so when y'all left, we're all going. That ain't God. But God knew what He was doing. Are you with me? I'm just using them as an example because that's the only ones I know. And, and, and besides Benny. So, so understanding that God made divine providence. He told Moses, go to the rock. Follow me. I know it's hard sometimes. Go to the rock. I'm going before you. God said, I'll be standing there when you get there. With what? What's in your hand? And so, we, so, so they got here to Orlando. But God knew divine providence <laughs> was waiting on them. When they couldn't find the right fit. Huh. The right fit is where you need to be. Because when you're in the right fit, I am. When you're in the right fit, you're all in. No, 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 no. No, let me say it again. When you got the right fit, you're all in. You ain't some skeptic sitting there questioning because you're uncertain. Well, that's fine. Sometimes you are uncertain, but... When you know God has made the right fit, come on now, what happens? You connect. You're all in. I got married when I was 10. What are y'all laughing for? I got married, Benny, when I was 19. Right out of high school. I mean, right, right out of high school. And brother, I didn't know God. She was backslidden. My wife, she's 19. 
Oh, I'm, I'm trying to show something to you. When, when, when I saw her, it was lust. It wasn't love. Y'all are all liars. I love her. You don't, you're lusting after her. So you mistake lust with love. It's getting quiet in here now. I'm preaching the truth, whether y'all like it or not. 19. You, what do you know about love at 19? I didn't have the Holy Spirit. I had some kind of spirit, but it wasn't the Holy Spirit. But bro, but bro, when I saw her in a bikini, I said, that's a right fit. I'm just giving you an illustration, y'all. That's the right fit. Divine providence. Y'all think I'm joking. It's divine providence. I saw her. Because I was a heathen, drug addict, alcoholic. Come on, somebody. Didn't know God. I never went to church. I started smoking dope when I was 12. Started drinking Boone's Farm wine. Anybody remember Boone's Farm wine? Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Three honest people. So, so I understand. <laughs> Y'all are looking at me like I'm crazy. So I understand. Wait a minute. It was divine providence. I'm getting where? Hold on. Just hang with me. It was divine providence. Though at the time, I didn't know it was divine providence. Are you following me? They're thirsty. They're complaining. God said, most go to that rock. I'll already be there. I didn't know God. God put somebody in my path. When God put her in my path, I didn't know what I was doing. I said, I want her. It wasn't love. It was lust. But then we got married. When we got married, she starts bringing up a couple years later, uh, let's go to church. I said, church? What? And we go to church. The people, the church, were so unfriendly. Oh, my God. I got more love in a bar than I did in a church. Can I help somebody right now? I got more acceptance around drug heads than I did Christians. Ah, getting quiet up in here. But God, divine providence, hooked me with her. If I never to her, I'd never started going to church. Then I never heard about this man called Jesus. Then I never heard about this love of God that God had for me. Then I would never understood that without Him, I'm not complete. Without Him, I'm not complete. You can run there. You can run there. You can do that. You can do this. But without Jesus, you are not complete. That's why you're here. When you came to Orlando, divine providence, them. Well, this is the right fit, so I got all in. Right fit, I got all in. I'm only 37. Right fit, I got all in. And why are y'all laughing again? Because we've been married 43 years. Do the math. If I'm 37, we've been married 43 years. Anyway, I'm about to help you with something. When you're all in, it don't always feel good. But if you're all in, you ain't leaving. That's so good right there. That's so good. I said, when you're all in, you ain't leaving over the first argument, first disagreement. I just don't like how they do that there. You don't leave because of that. I'm helping somebody. No, because it's the right fit. Divine providence. Why are you at Iglesia Pentecostal Genesis Church in Orlando hearing this little white man yell at you on a Sunday on October 31st, Halloween? Some of y'all rather be trick-or-treating, but it was divine providence that brought you here to rid the Is this the right fit? If it is, get all in. Now, if I was preaching at Hope Church, I would say, if it ain't the right fit, leave. I can't say that here. Because I don't pastor this church. We want you to stay until you understand, is this the right fit or not? You follow me? I'm going to get back to the message in a second. God sends Moses to a rock. I'll be there before you get there. He said, strike that rock. Remember what I'm preaching about? Amalek comes and resists after the people have just seen God do Red Sea, God bring manna, and God bring water out of a rock. And they still, watch this, or in a movement toward a promise. In a movement toward a promise. I have a promise. I'm moving toward it. Are you with me? God ain't lying. So, 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 so when the enemy sees you, make a move. Here comes battles. 
Here comes resistance. Because the Bible says in verse 8, now, everybody shout now. Now, when? Now. Why now? I was just getting it together. Why now do I got to face resistance because I'm on the move somewhere? Why now? Now Amalek came and fought. They engaged the battle. I'm not looking for a battle. The enemy will engage one. Hear me. Because when he engages battle, it reveals leadership. What do you mean? I say when battles come and resistance comes to your life, now, now, now Amalek. Why are they coming now? Because Israel's on the move. Why is the enemy coming now to fight you at Ecclesia? Because Ecclesia is on the move. Is that right? So why now? God in battles reveals true leadership. In resistance, God reveals who your strength is in. So Amalek comes now. You know what you need now, bro, in a now battle? You need now faith. When you're in a now battle, what do I do? i got to have now faith. I don't need yesterday's faith because that already got me through. I don't need tomorrow's faith. I'm not there yet. What I need is now faith. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, evidence of things not seen. You can't see it yet. You can't touch it yet. You need now faith to get through it. Now Amalek came. Fault. Engage the battle. Huh. Now, God in the history of Israel through Moses is the book of Deuteronomy. You all understand that, right? The book of Deuteronomy is nothing but a rehearsal of the history of Israel. So in Deuteronomy chapter 25, watch this, verse 17 and 18, God says through Moses to Israel, remember what Amalek did to you. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty competitive. I don't like losing. How many of y'all don't like to lose? I don't like losing. So, so, so God says through Moses to Israel, remember what Amalek did to you. Now, get ready, I'm about to tell you something. Remember how Amalek attacked you on your way out. Wait a minute. He attacked. Remember, Amalek attacked you on your way out. When? This is the statement I'm about to make. This is for somebody. When you're in transition, things become unsteady. When you're in transition, when you're, when you're moving from transition, nothing but moving from one place to another place, it's unsteady. Let me help y'all think you know everything. In transition, there, there's things you don't know because you're in transition. You ain't been to the place, but in transition, things become unsteady in your life. You know, transitioning from one job to the next. Transitioning. Transitioning from one relationship to another relationship. Transition. Transition from one church to another church. Transition from one location to another location. Transition from one state to another state. They become unsteady because there's things in unsteadiness that you don't know yet. If you knew it, you would be more steady. So they're in transition. And in transition, they are unsteady. And God said, remember what they did to you. Now watch this. Give me, give me. How many of y'all COVID free in here? I promise you I am too. I just got to aggravating allergies. All right. I need some people, yeah. If you're COVID free, you know, give me some space. <laughs> yeah. All right, get right here and, and face that way. Just kind of, not, not, not in some order, just, you know, kind of random group of people. Come over here, sir. Just stand right and face this way. Yeah, yeah. This is what the church says. We can't get you going the right way anyway. So, all right, can, come here, sir. Don't all the pastor's children just so sharp and awesome? I, I like it. Talented. Oh, my God. Talented. All right, watch. So, the, God said, remember Amalek. I'm, I'm still there. What he did to you on the way out. Are right, y'all going somewhere? Kind of slowly walk, going somewhere. 
How now 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 give me give me give me a roll with the glasses right here. Come here. Are you good? You're negative, all that? Yeah. All right, right there, right there, right there, right there. Not real close, but right there. All right. Stop, y'all, stop. All right. So God said, in transition, things become unsteady. Because you're going places you've never been. God said, remember what Amalek did to you on the way out. How he attacked. Where is he going to attack you at? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He's going to attack you not where you're strong at. I'm not, hear me. I'm not tempted where I'm strong at. I'm about to kick that chair over. Because you can sit there and look at me and say, well, I ain't got no weaknesses. You're a liar, 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 pants on fire. You have weaknesses. Everybody has weaknesses. You don't want to confess those weaknesses because you're a human being. But everybody in this room's got weaknesses, and the enemy does not attack you where you're strong at. So I said, you better know your enemy. The enemy's not going to come in front of you. You're not going to see the devil come one day and say, well, I guess you know, he's No, you're not going to see that. He's going to attack. Watch, the Bible said this. Deuteronomy 25, 17, 18. He attacked your rear rank. Your rear ranks. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, I'm, I ain't going to say it. Your rear rank. That's where he attacked you. Where? From behind. Why does he attack from behind? Because when you're going somewhere, going somewhere strong, strong, he ain't coming this way because you're united. Two are better than one. A threefold cold is not quickly broken. Watch this. The enemy doesn't fight your marriage when your marriage is strong. The enemy tries to weaken your marriage when you're disagree, got dispute, because he tries to divide you. Because he knows when two come together and are in agreement, anything can happen. Yes. Yeah. That's why he tries to divide the church. That's why he tries to bring division. Divide the vision. He ain't coming against Ecclesia. Where Ecclesia strong at. Coming up from behind. Watch this. And snatching one person at a time. Where you're weak. Weary. Now hold on. Everybody gets weary. That's another true statement. Everybody gets weary. Everybody gets tired. That's why the Bible says in Galatians 6, 9, be not weary in well-doing. Not weary in evil. Not weary in doing bad. Don't be weary in well-doing for in due season. Everybody say due season. My season's coming. You shall reap if you faint not. Are y'all with me? So this church is going somewhere. These pastors have vision. God's connecting you. Get all in. Because watch this. He ain't attacking where you're strong. He's coming where you're weak at. Because you got tired. You got weary. Why? Because it takes work. Especially during COVID, a COVID attacked every church. COVID shut down every church for a season. COVID made people scared to come back to church. COVID, but we'll go to Walmart, we'll go to Lowe's, we'll go to restaurants, we'll go to malls. My God, we'll have 90,000 people in a stadium watching a game with no mask on, cheering. Come on, somebody, did you watch the Braves last night? That'd be the Atlanta Braves. That'd be the next world champions. Watch tonight. Watch. They're, they're, they're up in there. Strangers high-fiving each other. In each other's face. But church? Come on, somebody. Church? Oh, my God, I can't go in church. What? Attack you where? Will you get weary? Tired. But there's a due season coming. Because you've been planting. Yo, my, my, I, I preach like this. It eventually makes sense at the end. Because I said, God's put seed to multiply. But He wants to kill seed. So I've been sowing seed. How many of y'all been sowing seed? I don't mean just financially. But, but that part of it. But I've been sowing my faithfulness as much as I can. I'm trying to be faithful. I'm trying to be consistent. I, I'm trying to be determined. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep walking with God. But there are times you want to quit. And that's when the enemy comes. Not when you're all together going somewhere. Now he sees over here where they're stragglers. It's called stragglers. He attacks the rear rank. Stragglers. Stragglers mean weary people. Tired people. God said you better remember how the enemy attacks. Y'all can sit down. It's how the enemy attacks. Remember how the enemy attacks. So then God says, I'm, I'm almost done. God says, Moses, if the battle's coming now, here's what you need to do. 
You need to choose some men. You need to choose some men. I'm not, I'm not, what do you call it, what's the word, a male chauvinist? But I'll tell you what, there needs to be some men rise up in the church. I'm not just talking about here. You see all kind of women involved and women, man, women, women are stronger than men. If women can push a nine pound a human being out of their body, they're stronger than men. <laughs> women go through it. Women, women, my God, are tough. Women don't quit easy. Come on, men. Come on, men. Come on, men. Men, men, men. We heard of a fingernail. We complain about it. Oh my God, dear. You know, we complain about it. But 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 we need men. We need men that will fight. Men that know how to fight. I don't mean physically. Men know how to pray. Men know how to worship. Men, men know how to take the lead. Men know how to take their family and pray over their family. Come on, men. Then he said, choose some people, non-gender, who will fight. Men, women, choose them, Moses. Choose them. Joshua, go get them. Huh. People that will fight. Better remember the enemy in your transition. Watch this. So now Moses knows. Hear me. I'm almost done. Moses knows to advance the kingdom of God. Not advance the church. We got too much church. Kingdom of God means authority. Jesus preached about the kingdom of God. Y'all remember? The kingdom of God. The rule of God. The power, the authority of God. So he, so, so he says, if you're, if you're going to, I know this as a pastor. I know this now as a pastor. I know this. I learned this and still learning this progress. You know, I'm not, the, I'm not the lead pastor. My son is, but I'm still in ministry, still overseeing, still preaching, still doing leadership. So I understand that in ministry, you've got to have people that will fight with you. Choose some men. Watch this, because the pastor knows I can't do vision by myself. Are you with me? You know, anything great cannot happen by yourself. I know you think you're all that in a bag of chips and a t-shirt, but you need people in your life that will fight. I told you a while ago, I'm almost done. Resistance battles reveals leadership. But also resistance and battles reveals people. Are they with me or not? Because I'm in a battle. I got vision. I got vision. And anytime the enemy, you got vision, he attacks the head. He attacks the head because he don't want the head to complete the vision. So understanding that, Moses says, choose us some men, Joshua, because I cannot advance where we're going without people fighting with me. Not Fighting against me, fighting with me. Joshua chooses men, Carlos. He chooses people that will go out and fight. Watch this. Moses said, now get, get the understanding of this. Moses said, I'm going to stand on the top of the hill. Now, I don't understand this because my first question is, why ain't he down the valley fighting? Right, y'all? Y'all ever feel that way? Like, are you with me? Joshua's in the valley fighting. Moses, I'm going to go on the top of the hill. <laughs> this is so good. So as a shepherd, you know, the Bible uses the analogy that a pastor is a shepherd. Are you with me? A shepherd always goes before the sheep. We sang that song. He's my defender. He's before me, behind me. Remember y'all, we just sang that. So a shepherd goes before the sheep. The analogy is the pastor is the under-shepherd of the church. The chief shepherd is Jesus. I'm just helping y'all. So the under-shepherd is the pastors. The under-shepherd is at a place. That's why Moses went to the top of the hill. The under-shepherd's at a place where Carlos, he sees ahead, not where they are now. When a pastor sees what's ahead, he develops strategy for the head of where you're going, but it don't make sense in your now. It don't make sense in your now but you're fighting the battle. He's ahead seeing where you're going. He's thinking already. They're thinking already. Land, location. They're thinking already. How do we expand? You're, oh my God. They're thinking ahead because they see ahead. Shepherds see what sheep can't. In the natural, sheep always have their heads down. Because they're always eating grass. I'm talking about in the natural. That's what the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. leaves me beside the still waters. 
He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of rice for his name. Say, yeah, either I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you all are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Shepherd. Shepherd. I need people that will fight. Now watch this. Come here, Pastor. I'm, I'm, oh, you're the keyboard player. Yeah. All right. Hold on. Stay right there. All right. Now watch. Moses says, I'm going up to the hill. I'm going to stand there. Joshua, get people that will fight. My question that I felt the Holy Spirit put in me, Carlos, is are there any Joshua's in this house? Think about that. Who is Joshua? Study your Bible. He's Moses' right hand man, assistant. Moses, guy that stayed with him, stayed with him. So Joshua's fighting. Now, God says, Come to the top of the hill. Most I'll stand there. Now here's, watch this. When, remember when I said it, when you know it's the right fit, you're all in. Remember that? This is making some sense. I'm about to close it. When you're all in, it's the right fit. You don't, don't miss this. You don't have to be asked. Read your Bible. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to break this down. Who asked Aaron and her to go up with him? Moses didn't. According to Scripture, we don't see, hey, Aaron, hey, Earl, come on. But we saw Aaron, we saw her get up. And they went with Moses, not, not being asked. Watch, as they go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. As they go up, stand behind him. As they go up, they're not asked. Get this, it's called relationship. If you don't have a relationship, I don't mean you got to be the pastor's best friend and you're always at his house. You know, you got to know him personally. I said vision, connection, right fit, I'm all in. Then nobody's got to tell me, man. Nobody's got to invite me to get involved. Nobody's got to invite me to fight because I'm all in. Help me, man. Now, Benny was in the military. I was in the military, but I didn't fight wars like Benny did. I was a medic. And, uh, I, I uh, drove an ambulance and all that stuff. But I came, I, I came out of, all right. I got to catch a plane. Watch. So when I came out of heathen, drugs, all that stuff, I didn't know anything about the military. Oh my God, I was straight up, whatever. I walk in, hair down past my, you know, in my back. and Hippie, man, type thing. And I walk in, bro, and say, raise your right hand. I raised my right hand. Nobody made me raise my right hand. It wasn't, I wasn't drafted. Nobody made, I just volunteered. When I raised my right hand, they said, you know, da, 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 all this stuff. They, I do. And then we let your hand down. Guess what happened? Guess what happened from that moment? I was no longer my own. I now am following huh, stuff from leadership that I might not have agreed with, but I submitted. I don't mean in church, you know, you follow somebody that is in sin. They don't, I'm not saying, I said, but I follow because I'm all in, are you with me? Because I'm in the kingdom of God and I understand the principle I don't have to be asked. I got saved. I got into church, bro, and I didn't ask anybody if I could help. I just went and helped. Watch. I just went and helped because when he got tired, Lift your hands, Pastor. When his pat, when he's up, and that he's in that right posture, he's keeping the right posture. The Bible says, the Bible says his hands became weary. So watch, it's called gravity. It's called gravity. It's called gravity. This is gravity. What goes up? Go jump off the church. What goes up? It's called gravity. Watch. So in human sense, we, we, we as leaders, the pastor's holding his arms up, but gravity begins to pull. Things begin to pull. Issues begin to pull. Discouragement begins to pull. Doubt begins to pull. What's 
pulling you down. Because the other day you had the right posture. Today you don't. The other day you were all in. But now you're doubting. Because gravity's got a hold of you. It's pulling you down. It's pulling you down. But these two guys were not asked to go up. They went up. And they saw something. They saw something. Moses didn't read your Bible. Moses didn't say, "Hey, y'all, y'all help me." Don't you see my? Don't you see? Don't you see? Don't you see? They weren't waiting. He said, "Here, here, Moses, sit." <laughs> I ain't got time to either. Sit on this rock. Yeah, yeah. Get in a posture. Get in a posture, Moses. Where we'll come on one side and we'll come on the other side. And watch this. What he could not what he could not keep up by himself. I'm speaking to somebody. What he could not speak up keep up by himself, others came alongside and said, We got you. We got you. Held his arms up. Now watch. Now watch. This is important. This is my, my tenth closing right here. Because duration matters. I don't need people in my life that will just fight, quit, and leave. I need duration. That they'll fight with you to the end. Aaron and her never went nowhere. Never went nowhere. Never went nowhere. Now, now more is happening to where now we see the power of intercession. We see the power of intercession. You have somebody interceding for you today. Hebrews 7.25 that Jesus ever lives to intercede for you. Jesus ever lives that you might be saved to the uttermost. Saved to the uttermost. Not halfway. Not three quarters of the way. Saved you to the uttermost. Moses symbolic standing on that hill. We're fighting battles in the valley. But I know somebody's praying for me. Somebody's praying for you. Not to quit. Not to give up. Because God is interceding for you. Victory comes. Victoria. Spanish pretty good, wasn't it? Victoria. Victory comes. Read it. The first thing Moses does is build an altar. Why build an altar? To never forget that it was God that you give the credit to give all the glory to give all the praise to it was God Moses says I now call the place where God has taken us from one spot to another spot but to never forget the battle it was him because we were fighting in unity and now we're in unity I'm building an altar to never forget because there's a banner there's a banner the banner is Yahweh Nisi the Lord is my banner use the analogy world championship teams football baseball basketball whatever they at the end of victory and championship they raise they raise they raise a banner them guys look up and go yeah man we'll always see that banner that we were world champions in 2018 whatever 19 the praise will raise one and they'll see the banner 2021 world champions it always brings you back to victory that under the banner is always care provision love guidance under the banner victory i want you to stand up watch this stand up i won't by yourself lift both hands just by yourself yeah just lift both hands is this all right? What time y'all usually leave? I don't want to hold you long. I mean, just or worshiping, singing, whatever. Just, just by yourself. Stir the stag. Your hands up. Just by yourself. 
things of my soul. By, by yourself. See, you're trying to do it by yourself. Just by yourself. Yeah. There any, there any Aaron and hers that don't have to be asked, and they're in the fight for the duration, because this is the right fit, and I'm all in. So I don't know how long you can do that right there by yourself. But I promise you, gravity's about to take over. Some of y'all feel it now. Your shoulders are burning. Because you realize, I can't hold I can't hold this posture. I'm preaching better than you'll get this. I can't hold this posture all day like this. Yeah, just leave them up. Just leave them up. Leave them up. I can't hold this posture all day by myself. Like you Anybody feeling a little just getting a little sore? Anybody? Now, now I want you to come across the aisles and I want everybody to grab an arm of your neighbor. Grab an arm. You ain't got to breathe on them. Just grab an arm. Come across the aisle. I want everybody having an arm up. I, I, I said come across the aisle. I want everybody having an arm up. Please, just, just, you know, just please, just one second. Just do it for me. Come on, come on. I'm, I'm still getting resistance back there. Just come across the aisle and grab an arm somewhere. Just make connections. Thank you, thank you. Just make connection. Thank you. Everybody's arm. Everybody's arm. Everybody's arm. Everybody's arm. Now, everybody's got an arm. So I'm asking you, does that feel a little bit better? Come on, y'all. In the natural, you feel like, man, I can keep going. And then I can probably hold this longer. Come on, somebody. Because I got somebody helping me. Right now, God's saying to you as a church. When you come along somebody and you help them when they're weary and they're tired, God's going to help you. Because God's going to send somebody to you to help you. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, I pray over Ecclesia. Over this pastor and his wife. That God, they'll always feel the strength of this church. They'll feel strength in their arms, God. They'll feel strength, God, in unity. They'll feel strength in support. They'll feel strength in the vision. They'll feel strength, God, where well, they ain't got to go ask people, hey, can I get your help? People will rise up and people will say, yes, I'm in. I'm all in. I'm going with you, Pastor. I'm going with you. What do you want me to do? I'm all in. I'm an Aaron. I'm a her. You ain't got to ask me to go to the hill. I'm going up to the hill in Jesus' name. Pour out your spirit. All right. I want everybody, everybody bow in prayer. Everybody bow in prayer. If you're in this room before I leave, you don't know Jesus. You never just totally surrendered your life to Him. You're saying today, I just feel like there's something missing in my life. It's relationship, man. It's not church. It's not religion. It's relationship with a living God. You, God loves you so much it don't even make sense. Yes, Jesus. And I know we try to perform for it and earn our way and do enough good. That ain't why God loves you. He loves you. Period. You want to receive that love in your life? I'm going to ask you to do something. Nobody's looking around. Nobody's going to embarrass you. You ain't got to join the church today. Just join up with Jesus. You want to give your heart to Jesus? Hallelujah. I want you to lift your hand right now. Anybody? Anybody? Thank you. Anybody? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Arm, leave those arms up. I want everybody to pray out loud with them. That way we are with them. They're not going to pray it by themselves, but God's about to save you. That God's about to come into your heart and fill you with love right now. So everybody say this out loud with those that raise their hands. Everybody say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I come to you today. I come to you. Because I realize, I realize my, life my life without you, without you is, incomplete, is incomplete. But with you, but with it, is complete. it is complete. I am yours. I am yours. You, are mine. you are mine. Forever. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you. for dying for my for dying for my the world buried you, the world buried but God the Father God raised, raised you from the dead, you from and, you're and you're living. Come live in my heart. Come live in my heart. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus for forgiving me for forgiving all my sin, all my sin. healing me from all my hurt, all my and I'll praise you, I'll and I'll serve you all the days of my life of by your grace, by your mercy, in Jesus' name. Somebody give God a praise up in here right now. Yes. 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 Yes.
alabamos Rey, aleluya Santo eres Señor Jesús te bendecimos te bendecimos Señor Jesús gracias Padre Celestial por tu fidelidad Señor Jesús ha estado entre nosotros Señor Jesús tu Espíritu Santo ha venido y ha depositado Jehová, palabras Señor Jesús certera Padre Celestial para aquellos corazones Señor Jesús que aún están ambivalentes Jehová que no saben si van o vienen Padre, tú has hablado claramente en esta tarde Padre Celestial venimos ante tu presencia Señor reconociendo Jehová tu soberanía Padre tú conoces Señor las razones Señor Jesús las sazones y los tiempos son tuyas, Padre. Eso dice la palabra, Jehová. Tú conoces, Padre Celestial, dónde estamos y a dónde vamos en esta tarde, Padre. Gracias te damos, Señor Jesús, por tu palabra, Jehová. Porque es viva y eficaz, Señor, más cortante que ojo de espada de doble filo, Padre. Gracias te damos, Señor Jesús. Te bendecimos y te adoramos, Señor Jesús. Aleluya.